I'm sitting here on a uh, flight from London back to Singapore. We're in the middle of the uh, coronavirus crisis and uh, markets are really suffering. Um, you know, there is going to be a significant economic impact from this, you know, in, the, in terms of job losses, in terms of, uh, you know, real, uh, real pain and suffering. And, and, I, and the, the, uh, the irony is not lost that I am recording this message in first class on Singapore Airlines uh, you know, flying, uh, flying back home. But, uh, but, you know, we have to take the politics out of these real human uh, disasters because, you know, it's all too easy to try and create them and us, you know, political scenarios. And the biggest challenge we face as, you know, humanity, I believe, is, uh, is inequality and, uh, uh, and, the, and the problems that we have globally with, with inequality. But the the way to solve that, I think it's, you know, you've often heard the expression trade, not aid. I think the only way to help people is by helping them to help themselves. So you need equality of opportunity. So better education, better support services and things like that. Simply donating money or simply piling money into these economies creates dependency, not, not solutions to the problem. And, and actually, I believe the way forward is actually to empower entrepreneurs. So there are hundreds of millions of entrepreneurs all over the world who solve problems every day and create value every day through the businesses that they provide in their local communities and to, uh, and to the rest of the world. Um, but those entrepreneurs aren't rewarded for that activity. Money is, uh, is stuck in hot sandy countries invested in derivatives and stock markets and bond markets. That money isn't coming into the real economy. It's not coming into entrepreneurs. It's not coming to uh, those change agents, those people that are actually capable of, of creating value and, and solving problems. And, and I think if we can empower entrepreneurs, those entrepreneurs go on and solve some of the biggest problems in the world. So, uh, you know, if you look at uh, Bill Gates or uh, Larry Ellison or, um, you know, these people that feel profoundly affected by what's happened to them in the world and also have the financial resources to do something about it, they take real positive action. Now, I would much rather see an entrepreneur, someone that is just programmed to solve problems, I'd much rather see them with money go and solve those problems rather than you know, charities and NGOs. Now, the charities and NGOs are very well-meaning, but you know, fundamentally, they don't have the skills to be able to fix these, uh, fix these problems. And so we need to empower a generation of entrepreneurs to go out and fix uh, global inequality. And this is why I'm, I'm a, a passionate believer in democratizing wealth. I think we need to take the, uh, you know, the, the entrepreneurial community and empower them with wealth. Now, you have to understand that 50% of GDP in pretty much every developed economy comes from the activity of small to medium sized businesses. And yet those small to medium sized businesses never actually really become truly wealthy. Um, because all of the money in the world is, is, is in derivatives, in stocks, in completely different investment uh, instruments. And so despite the fact that the asset managers and the banks and financial institutions pride themselves on diversification, none of that diversification actually comes into small to medium sized businesses, which is most of the economy. So if 50% of GDP is, is driven from small to medium sized businesses, why are they so excluded from uh, global capital. So this is the thing that I'm passionate about fixing. I really want to reconnect global capital to small to medium sized businesses because I think when we do that, we truly have an opportunity to democratize wealth. Then we have an opportunity to parachute money into uh, business owners all over the world in every town and city of every country in the world. And those business owners, when they become wealthy, they then choose to fight the causes that have affected them most in their life, whether that's homelessness or cancer or inequality or any of the big things that really affect us in this world. I think entrepreneurs are the best placed people to do that. And if we can empower those entrepreneurs to take action and, and create wealth for themselves first, and then to go and solve some of the biggest problems in the world, I think we can truly have a global impact. And I, and I think we waste too much time arguing about the politics you know uh, uh, politics at the moment is really polarized nationalism globalism like all these different uh, ideas and everyone competing against it but at the end of the, the end of the day we're all people we're all global citizens 
And as citizens, we can take our own actions. I think we should just ignore government. I think we should just get on and do what we think is right and, and how we want to tackle the world's problems. And as, as entrepreneurs, we can go out and solve those bigger problems. I don't think it matters what government is in power or what their beliefs are or what people believe their beliefs are. I think we just need to get on and fix global inequality. We shouldn't have poverty in the world. Capitalism has done a fantastic job of dragging hundreds of millions of people out of poverty over the last uh, over the last couple of decades. We've seen a huge shift away from socialism towards capitalism in the last 20 years with China and Vietnam and these other countries that were historically, uh, you know, uh, big rumps of, uh, of poverty. But what we're left now, what we're left with now is sort of a hard core. We've, we've kind of taken the low hanging fruit. What we're now left with is a real hard core of poverty. These are people that are living in, a, in an unsustainable way. And, and this, shouldn't, this shouldn't exist in this day and age. You know, we literally have people throwing away food and people that can't afford to eat. We, we, we should be able to fix this. It's within our control. We know that we know how to fix this. So we just need to get on and do it. And I think we need to stop relying on, uh, on governments and large corporations to do this. And we need to take control of this ourselves. You know, half of GDP is small to medium sized businesses. So I think it's up to the small to medium sized businesses to take control of this problem and to finally fix it once and for all because it is in it is within our power to do so therefore we should do it